So, good morning. To get into the topic, I would like to get the pulse of how you guys feel about job interviews. So, can you please raise your hand if you are comfortable and if you enjoy when you have to go for a job interview? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> now, if you are among those who didn't raise your hand, don't worry, it's normal. And you are not alone. And it's normal because there's a lot at stake. If you apply for a job, it's because this is something you really like, you would like to get the job. And there's a lot at stake eh, because there will be a decision about your future, about your career, but also about your life for the next three or maybe five years. So you have good reason to maybe see, feel a little of flies in your stomach eh, or not to be too at ease. And this is why I like to start every time I talk about job interviews uh, with this sentence. Often people come to me and they tell me, you know, when I apply for a job, I feel like I'm asking for something. I'm asking for a favor. I'm almost begging to get it. And on the other side, I have an interviewer who has the power to decide if to continue the interview, if to continue the selection process, or just stop. And he's there to judge me. And I don't like this. I prefer to look at the approach to a job interview as thinking that the recruiter has a need. He has an open position. Till he find someone who can do that job, Someone else will have to do it, work maybe at 150%, and this is not sustainable in the long term. Or maybe nobody has the time to do the new activities, or they don't have the profile to do it. So activities would have to be parked or not initiated. And you are there as a possible solution to that problem. You are there because you have the skill set, the competences, the potential, to do that job for which you are applying for. And if you look at a job interviews like this, then it becomes a conversation between peers. You're on the same level. You are looking for a job, you want that job, and the recruiter has a job and he needs someone who can do it. And then this balances. And also, a job interview is a conversation. Think about that. It's a conversation like a dating among two human beings that are there to discover each other, get to know each other, and be reassured. The recruiter wants to be reassured that you will be able to do the job, that you can do it quickly, that it will not take months for you to learn what has to be done, that you will fit with the company values and their culture. And also, if in the interview there is the hiring manager, so the guy that is potentially your future manager, he will think, do I want to spend eight hours per day, probably five days per week, with this guy I'm interviewing? But it's the same on your side. Uh, you want to see if actually what you read in the job description, in the announcement, and maybe information you got from the website of the company and other sources, if this is actually what you're talking, they are talking about in the interview. You also want to see if your values are the ones that you perceive by talking to the recruiters during the interview. Because it's the same. Imagine that you are at an interview and the recruiter manager, so your future potential boss, never smiles at you. Or that person for 30 minutes never look in your eyes. How would you feel working for that person on a daily basis? So you also decide if this is the right place for you. Now, as I said, there's a lot at stake. Um, it's an important conversation, the one with a, a recruiter for the job that you're applying for, and you need to be confident about it. And you also have to be not only confident about yourself, but you have to show it. The others need to perceive it. And you have good reasons to be confident, because you are bright guys. You have an education. 
you have proved to be where you are in your career, not by chance. And also, if you're not the ambassador of yourself, who will be it? So go for it, huh? be proud of who you are, and try to understand also what you are worth, what you are worth as a professional, and also for the job you are applying for, what is special about you that can be used in that job, why the company should select you and not someone else. To be confident, you know to know yourself. And a little exercise you can do is uh, to do a mini survey and ask these uh, three questions uh, to a group of uh, professionals that you trust and you respect. And you can choose some peers, uh, some of your colleagues. Uh, you can choose some of your former professors, uh, your manager, maybe some uh, suppliers, uh, um, some uh, others. Uh, and look at what they will say about you. Analyze the data, you're good at it, you're a scientist, and um, see if there are clusters of adjectives that come out that describe you. And you can use this information to see if your perception about yourself is what the others perceive of you. You may think you're an excellent, a great team player, and actually, this is not what the others value for. Or it can be the opposite. You think you are not good at communicating, and your peers and your professor think that you're an excellent communicator. You can also use this information to answer questions such as, can you tell me which are your strengths? Or where do you think you should develop yourself more? Which are your weaknesses? And there's a difference in saying, I'm a talented scientist, I'm a, think, uh, I'm a fast thinker, or saying, my peers and my professors say that I'm that I am a fast thinker. There is a big difference in the impact you will have when you introduce yourself. Another exercise you can do is to do a SWOT analysis about yourself. This is trying to define what are your strengths, your weaknesses, so your opportunities, and which are the risks you are taking in applying for a specific position. Think, how do you fit do you have the skill set that they are looking for? Is there other opportunities that would better meet what you want to do? The SWOT analysis is typically used by companies uh, to define how they are positioned on the market and how their product benchmark uh, with that of other companies. Uh, do the same. Benchmark yourself with the other colleagues uh, that are applying for your same job and try to understand what's special about you, what you have that is unique uh, and that that company would like and want from you. Confidence, importance of course, uh, but there is a fine line between perceived that at ease and confident uh, and being perceived that overconfident if not arrogant uh, or bragging. Um, Little tips maybe to try not to go beyond the line to take that risk is um, talk with uh, examples, provide data. And I'll give you a few, ex few examples. I can say um, I am very motivated uh, for this position in the pharma industry and in, in uh, your company. Or I can say I've been proven my motivation to work in pharma and in your company because I did an internship or a summer job in um, pharma in one of your competitors and I saw that actually what I had learned during my studies uh, was very helpful and also the kind of job and activities that I had to do were good for me and the people I was working with they were appreciating what I was doing. Also to me there is a difference in saying um, Last year, I provided a major contribution to the results of our lab or our department. And saying, actually, last year, because major is what is a major achievement or major result. But you can say, I have um, contributed by filing X patents or doing so many, um, identifying this number of molecules. I'm not a scientist, so I may say things that <laughs> are not accurate, by the way. Um, or I have been identifying five 
uh, new biomarkers that were used in this and that. So quantify, provide data. It's also important to be honest, authentic. Because in Italian we say that lies and omissions have short legs. They don't go that far. So if you have a gap in your career, in your uh, history, be cool about it. If you've been taking care of your children, of your family, there's nothing wrong with it. It's normal. But think of which are the skill set and the competences that you've been developing and using during that time and that you can use for the position you're applying for. As a parent, uh, I'm sure that you are, are a good negotiator, excellent communication skills, good planning, organizational skills, dealing with ambiguity and uncertainties. These are all things that can be very relevant for the job. One of the questions you can expect when you start an interview is, can you walk me through your resume? Can you tell me about yourself? Now, be reassured, usually the recruiter has read your CV and your motivation letter. It's very rare they don't. So it's not that they ask you to do their job, but they're asking you to summarize. They want to hear from you what are the few things in your career, in your history, that you mention. And also, they don't want all, only to know what you've been doing so far, your history, but they want to know what can you do for them. So this is not about you only, it's about you and them. What do you have for them? And you cannot take 15 minutes uh, to talk about all you've been doing. It's better to be short, to the point, target to introduce yourself in two, three minutes. It's better to be uh, shorter, and then if the recruiter, the, uh, your interlocutor has questions, she can ans ask them, rather than be interrupted because you are taking too much time. Imagine this is your sales pitch as an entrepreneur. It's the same. You're there to sell your services as a, a potential candidate. Now, to be brief and keep it short, you cannot say everything, so think of which are the two, three main points, relevant points, that you want to talk about. Maybe one point about your education, one point of what you like to do, which is the kind of environment where you express your potential at best. And this is a very difficult exercise to try to really identify what's special about you for that position. So if you are a Twitter user, imagine that you have to do this, answer this question in 140 characters. And these 140 characters need to be meaningful. So imagine the three, really four words, someone was saying it yesterday, that are your anchors, the things that are unique about you. You can do a lot of things to prepare for your interview in order to be successful. A few points I would like to uh, touch. Preparation. When you start playing a sport, imagine tennis, uh, you run everywhere in the court, uh, you sweat a lot, uh, um, it's very frustrating, and you're very clumsy. But by practicing your sport, uh, movement becomes fluid, uh, you start to sweat less because you have more control of your space and your gestures, and you start to play. It's the same for a job interview. Prepare yourself. There are questions like, can you tell me a bit about yourself, that you can expect. Look at the job announcement and think, what questions can I expect about the competence and experiences that they are looking for? And to prepare yourself, consider to record yourself audio and or video while you answer some of these questions and then listen to yourself or watch yourself. See if you like what you saw. Think if you were clear, if you have any, um, you know, uh, kind of things. And then you can do, do the same with a friend and say, okay, can I practice with you and I will do my little introduction and then afterwards, ask that person, what did you understand? Was I clear? Was that me? Or did it sound fake? Um, was it clear? Was it effective? And so on and so forth. 
As scientists, you have a very rich vocabulary. However, your interlocutor may not be a scientist, can be someone from human resources, or even your future manager who does not necessarily is a scientist. So keep it simple, or at least uh, adapt your language to your audience. I feel there is a difference in saying, uh, um, I work with below age patients, uh, and saying, I work with kids and teenagers. These are my patients. This anybody can understand. In the Western society, we also tend to be team players and say, we. This is what we did. This is what we achieved. And actually, it's good sometimes also to say, this is what I achieved. This is what I did. This is what I like. This is a way to get accountability for your results, or also for your non-results eventually, and also to clarify to the interlocutor, to your recruiter, what exactly you did. Because the interview is about you. It's not about your team. You may also get questions uh, that start with, uh, can you tell me of a situation where you had to deal with a difficult client, uh, um, give a negative feedback to one of your colleagues? These questions are called competence-based questions. And the idea is that to answer it, you talk about a specific situation you have experienced, you have been living in the past, and this is um, a predictor, an indication of how you are likely to behave in the future. So in this case, you can answer using what is called the STAR model. So talk about the situation, describe it, then about what was the action you had to do, what you actually did, and what was the outcome. And be specific, it's not if I have to give a feedback to my, one of my colleagues, this is what I would do, or in general, what I would do is, is really, that was the situation, it was two years ago, we were working on project A, etc., etc. And there's a lot of examples and literature on the internet, so Google it. I've been a hiring manager for scientists, and I'm not a scientist, uh, and uh, I know that we do have uh, uh, some uh, biases, uh, some uh, points of attention, uh, some reservations when we uh, talk in an interview with scientists. The main one is that uh, if you have selected your scientific career your, to study as a scientist, it's because this is where your heart beat. This is what you like. And the concern of a, a company is that you will stay in the position for six months, one year whatsoever, and then you will go back to academia. Or you will stay, but you will be frustrated because this is not where you want to be, where you really like to be. So think about what is really your passion and the right place for you to be. Also, the kind of work, the, the work that is done in a corporation can be very different from academia. Uh, it can be applied research, it can be R&D, it can be product development. And the objective is to put a product on the market. Or if a product has a problem on the market, is to fix it with a sense of urgency. So you don't always have the time to do all the activities that you usually can do in a lab in, uh, during your project. Sometimes in a company, you have to park your project because there's something more urgent to be done. Or the strategies may change. A competitor launches a new product and the company needs to quickly react and put something also on the product. So all the energies and the effort needs to be focused on that. Um, so time management, reactiveness is also a point of attention often for um, uh, recruiters. Another thing is that often you don't have the time to collect all the data to substantiate your recommendation. Do we do this or do we don't? And um, you have to live with it. You have to learn to take decisions based on the info you have and be comfortable with it, even if it's not perfect. One thing I learned from one of my uh, great managers uh, was uh, you are paid uh, to give your opinion. 
your expert opinion, even though you're not 100% sure of it. So you need to be able to be comfortable with this. Just to wrap up, I would like to go back to the analogy with uh, sport. And you can, uh, all of us can play a sport as a hobby uh, at amatorial level and have fun. But if we want to achieve some more results, uh, like do a marathon, a half a marathon, or go beyond, uh, then this requires something extra. And it's the same for an interview. You can just go there, or you can try to prepare in order to go there and be successful. And it's tough. There's a lot of competition. And I'm not saying this to scare you or to put you down. You're all bri brilliant uh, professionals. Uh, you have all you, it's needed to succeed. Uh, you're worth it, uh, if we go back to the L'Oreal uh, motto. So go for, you, for it. The world is yours. Uh, success is for you. So I wish you all the best for your next step in career, no matter which will will be, in industry, in academia. And thank you very much for your time. <laughs>